How are you going to hire crew? Well, I mean, I always start with department heads, and department heads hire the crew, essentially. You know, they hire, they they come in and they you look, if, as someone who's been an active AD and production manager as well as a producer, like, I'll look at a list and, you know, see who they're hiring. If there's somebody for some reason I don't want them, I could say something. But essentially, it's their decisions who they're going to have executing the work that they need as department heads. So your DP hires your crew, hires their crew, that covers their camera crew, hires their, you know, their gaffer will hire the rest of that, their electric. Uh, the production manager, the production, the production manager hires, you know, will hire the AD crew and be a part of that. Although the producer would obviously have a, have a definitive decision on that, who's going to first AD. Uh, and the director will have a lot to say about that as well, but it's ultimately they work for the producers. Um, so then the production manager usually is the arm of that, so they would decide. Um, casting is decided by producers. You know, producers will choose who's going to do the casting, and then the casting people go do the casting and send you the people. Do you know what I mean? So there's a lot of, <clears throat> especially at the level we're talking about, the film we're talking about, we would have the, we would have the budget to hire everybody we need to do the, those things. Like we wouldn't have to double up unless we wanted to, you know, on that level. So you would go department by department. Like I, I wouldn't have to make it as who's going to be the production design is going to be a huge element on this movie. Right. So that would be along with the DP would be some of the first decisions you're making along with it. So you start from essentially the top, as they say, starting from the top going down. So you're starting from those elements because they make those other decisions and help populate the rest of that list anyway. Because it really is just a big long list, like the budget, right? It's just a big long list of departments and things that need to happen. So you gotta be able to check off those people and those things that are actually being able to happen. Because they're gonna say, uh, you know, we want a Chapman, Leonard, you know, Dolly, baby Dolly. You don't necessarily need to know what exactly what that is. You need to know what it looks like. <laughs> At least, you know, it's like, what is that? Well, that's that, and there's a wheelchair, and, and they got you a chat. You need to know what it looks like, but you don't need to necessarily be like, I can operate it and whatever, which I actually happen to be able to do that too. But that's just because you get jobs sometimes and you're working with people and you learn how to help them hold it while well, they need to go step off somewhere. So it's that's kind of really, I always think of it in production as a big list. And it's just the elements that didn't need to be checked off to supply those things to populate the set on that list. How much are you determining that you'll spend per day of production? Some of that starts to come off of what, as you're, you know, let's just say that that first budget that we did, if we really did a first budget, uh, and it really was a good budget, which I would do, I would take it, I would break it down, and I would have done it then there may be some scenarios, like you said, well, maybe now money, like you only got this much. You know, maybe it's like, well, they only really had 4.5. Okay, so you really got to cut back just because they didn't have it and, it and you need this money now and that's how much they have. And so you decide, I'm going to do it with 4.5. So what do I have to manipulate to do that? Um, and so that's where you're, you're at at that point is you're really just, because you probably didn't even when you did that original budget, yes, you maybe talked to a production designer, but you had to, based on certain things, just kind of give assign a number to it. It wasn't a 100% broken down number that the production designer went in and did, did the work for you and told you that it was going to cost this much. What they did, what you might have done is you got to talk to them and they said, well, you know, the last time I did something like this, it cost that much. And then if you're smart, maybe you throw some money on top of that on what they gave you if you know them you might even throw more because maybe they're that or maybe you can do less because they're good at that and but you got to throw that number in there and then you got to trust that somebody gave you the right number on that because you're not going to have time to do every single one and vet every single one of those out you're going to ballpark it and take it off of what you did what you did then you're going to go through and then you're going to try to match those to what you did some places will be your you were right on some places you're like, nee, it's going to cost more. That's why you have a contingency. So it's a give or take, and then you just start balancing it out. At what point do you consider not having it a period piece? Um, well, I mean, I think if that becomes, that should have been probably as something before we went and pitched it. 
you know, so you don't, unless the, unless the investor is willing to, is that involved? And hopefully they're not. Yeah. Okay, hopefully you're just getting off to go off and just make your movie. So if they're not, then you don't want to necessarily go, oh, by the way, we don't have enough money to make it appear. At that point, that's too late. That, that naughty, that bad. <laughs> you in trouble. Can you give us specifics on how much key positions are making per day? Um, well, I mean, it's, it depends on what people are trying. I mean, for independent movies, it's probably a lot less. For, 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 um, for the guys who are working the big movies, it's probably a lot more. You know, I mean, DPs can be charging anywhere from, you know, I'd say, I'd say the minimum probably DPs are working for these days are real like five hundred a day, as a as a DP. I mean, I think one of my regular guys six hundred a day, you know. So you figure that out by week. Um, if they're doing a commercial, they're probably making more than that. Um, as an AD, I've always had my day rate down as six hundred a day, um, for non-union AD work. So, but you know, I don't always get six hundred dollars a day for non-union AD work. I probably would take as little as three hundred for non-union AD work. But that's, you know, it's it's really it kind of depends on what market you're in. Um, I think in Atlanta, there's probably a little bit more flexibility in scale, and I think the people that are still here in LA working at those at certain rates, they're they're pretty much keeping them locked at whatever rate they're there because they got bills to pay. So and there's a lot of lot more opportunities out there. So most people tend to have an independent rate and a uh, studio or commercial rate. Like six hundred dollars a day for me to AD is usually going to be a is going to be a commercial or corporate thing. Like yeah, I'm not getting that on a on any independent production. Um, you know, but probably the, the least amount I would take on an independent production with my experience level would probably be three hundred these days. So. And directors and event level, they don't get paid anyway. So, <laughs> but they get their name on the film. But they get their name on it, yeah. And they get to do the Q and A. Mm -hmm. Worst case scenario, let's say we're a week away from production, and lead actor can't make it. Maybe his commitment to another film went over, and he's not going to be able to. First, I would try if it's that like that. I would try to see what I could do to to, to move schedule around and work with the other production because the other production is obligated to to work with you because they're keeping them over. So you can always that's the first thing you would do. Is there any way I can move this around and you know give them some more time because I want to keep them? Or is there any way I can move it back to accommodate them? Um, if there's no way in heck and I'm losing them, then I have to look at, well, is it, can I, re is there, who's on the list that we can replace them? Is there somebody on this list that I can replace them with? Or is it worth just waiting until they're available? You know, if, you're to, if it's somebody like Idris Elba, you're probably going to try to wait to see if you can get them. Cuba, you might wait for Cuba. No offense, Cuba. But you probably, you might, you might be, okay, Cuba, I can, you know, maybe I can trade off Cuba and... You know, um, but Will Smith's probably more available these days now. I'm not saying that, but you know, he is probably a little more available, just a little bit. Convince him he wants to do that deep, heartfelt, small, independent movie and really bring bring it back from after that thing. That might be the sales pitch. A role that could have that Sidney Poitier would have played. Something like that. I don't know. I'm making stuff up now. Six degrees of separation. Yeah, something, anything. 